next thing I know, he's drinking. OK, he's drinking then. OK, but the problem, Sarah, is that so are you. You are an alcoholic and so is he. You can't... So your, your criticism of him for dealing with his problems through alcohol, whilst you know, true, are s ring somewhat hollow. Maybe that would be the problem. The problem should be you should both quit drinking rather than you expecting him to fucking quit drinking whilst you sit there and just get fucking just absolutely mullered every single day of the week, you know? Because then you get even more annoying, and then he will, maybe then one day, if you get him drunk enough, you know, what about all of the, you, you talk about the curtain rod incident. Maybe that was a, that was an anomaly. That was just a, that was a rare instance where it broke through. You don't have it, what you don't know is how much, how many times did he not fucking attack you violently, because he was too fucking drunk. He was too drunk to stand, to focus, or even think, right? He's probably, you fucking would, you'd have been in traction, Right, you'd have been fucking dead in the ground, and then he, he would have—you would have been killed, buried, and he would have then gone and dug your corpse up just to punch it in the face more, right? But but no, instead, he ends up, you know, being being fucking cubed. So it's like, oh man, I know where this is gonna go. So I'm gonna go upstairs and read a book. Or I'm going to go for a bike ride, or I'm going to do something this, else. Sorry, this woman's never read a book in her life. I'm going to go for a bike ride. I'm going to go for a... No, you're going to get drunk. And all she's describing here, she's talking about how she deals with the relationship. Like, she's some fucking... Like, this, like this, if this is a really, like, admirable, strong quality. All she's describing is what happens with all people who end up living together. And that is that you can't be around each other all the time, because you inevitably end up... Your little bits start annoying with you. Annoying you. And if you're living with Sarah Boone, let's face it, that's going to happen very quickly, because there's a lot of things... Things. So she's just going to go upstairs and read a book or go for a bike ride. And she's acting like that is some kind of noble gesture on her part. No, it's just we've all done that where it's just we've walked out and they go, where are you going? I'm going for a walk because if I am near you for one more second, I will burn this fucking place to the ground. I don't want to drink. I, I don't want to drink. I don't want to drink. But I do constantly all the time. I don't want to. Yes, Sarah, but you do. Right? You do. You do drink all the time. This is why I don't believe you're reading a book or you're fucking riding a bike because you're, you're too drunk. You'd be safer reading a book whilst you're on a bike. I don't want to drink. The occasional wine... Whatever. Yeah, that was very convincing. I don't want to drink, you know, and I'm really, I don't. The occasional wine or whatever. Define wine. It's not exactly a measurement or a unit, is it? Wine. Define wine. Oh, just, I just have one or two cubic hectares of, of, of 87% proof wine. You know, I just have one of the, I just have four, I have to have four bottles of cheap Merlot, right, every hour. Or I get, you know, and that, but other than that, Fine. I'm also mixing it with vodka and stuff like that, and all the other things I'm doing. Or if it's a weekend. Or if it's a weekend, you know, just a weekend, you know, Saturday and Sunday. I mean, you might as well count Friday because that's part of the weekend. And fuck it, Thursdays kind of feels like the weekend, doesn't it? And uh, and let's face it, Monday's depressing. Who wants to drink on Monday? So Thursday to Monday, and then you know Tuesday, Tuesday to midweek, just as a week, and then you know, fuck it, Wednesday's there. You might as well go for it. Apart from that, I only drink on. There are only two occasions in which I drink alcohol, and that is when it's raining and when it's not raining. And I believe if you check the fucking you know, meteorological records for this weekend on Sunday, it was not raining. And then it started raining. That's when you, you have a good time. You don't have to wake up the next day. Oh, yes, day. of course. That's the reason everyone goes out and gets drunk on a uh, drunk. It's because they don't have to wake up the next day. All I want is to, be a, is to have to go to sleep and for, to never get up ever again. God almighty. I have to wake up the next day and do things. I have to tend to Lucas. I have to take him to school. I have all this stuff to do. Okay, literally what she just said there was nothing other than take her son to school. Listen, tomorrow I have to get up. I have to do so much stuff. Right, I have to get up and take my son to school. Right, and then lots of other things as well. Right, because once he's at school, she doesn't have to tend. You don't have to tend to him when he's at school, Sarah. He's at school. Right, and I'm sorry, but yes, school is on. Is, is in the morning. Right, but. You know, that's that's on you, love. You had a kid. He doesn't know how to, I guess, maintain himself where I can do 50 things at once and still know the 50 things more previously prior than I need to get done. <laughs> oh, this, this is, see, this is, again, this is the problem. She's People like her who are so 
you know, just such a malignant narcissist is that whenever she needs to look, whenever things need to look sympathetic, everything's really, really bad and she's trying really, really hard. She's doing everything she can, but she's up, up against everything. And then when it's meant, to, when she's meant to look good, I, was like, I can do 50 things at once and then think of 50 things I've got to do afterwards. So it's like, I'm going to have these 50 glasses of wine and then once I've finished these 50 glasses, I'm going to have another 50 glasses. Right? And I've got to make sure to piss the other 50 glasses out, which I probably won't do because I'll be drunk. Right? And then hopefully by the time I get to the end of that 50th, the 100th glass of wine, uh, my son will be home, at which point I can send him off to his friend and I can go to sleep and have a nap, right? I can have a nap for a couple of, you know, 18 hours, at which point I'll wake up, take my son to school, right, tend to him very gracefully by taking him to school, right, and then leave him at school and I'll drink another, you know, it's like I'm just, everything's just going on at once. I'm like, you know, like, Nobody can appreciate the stress I'm under. Fucking submarine captains, heart surgeons, and Gordon Ramsay ain't got shit on me. He can't process like that. He didn't process like that. So it, he would literally, not literally, but had smoke coming out of his ears. I'm sorry, what exactly did George need to do in order to... What, what difficult thing was he like... He's... You know, I mean, you both are in the same situation. So let me get this straight. You can do 50 things at once whilst also thinking of the next 50 things you've got to do afterwards. George, on the other hand, sits there staring into space, desperately trying to distract his mind from, like, reality, right? Because if it seeps in, he's going to get depressed and smoke's going to come out of his ears. What exactly? Is, and, and yet, despite all the fact, despite all this, Sarah, I don't know if you've noticed this, you and George were in the same scenario in life. You were both at the same level, at the same point, doing the same thing in the same place with each other. So maybe those 50 things you're doing aren't really fucking useful. You might as well just be sat there staring into... And that's probably what annoyed the piss out of George, is he was like, bitch, just stop, sit down and drink. Stop trying to do stuff. Stop trying to make your life better. Stop trying to create this illusion that you are somehow improving or you're getting better. You're not. So the next thing you know, he doesn't want to deal with it. I'm going to go get something to drink. So the majority of the time, I would hang out outside or do something else. Oh, yes, of course. That well-known tactic for trying to avoid drinking alcohol, going outside and hanging out. Because as we all know, it is impossible for alcohol to be consumed unless you are literally indoors. And that, that is true to an extent for Sarah, because that's where the drinks cabinet is. right? And whereas in the, in, in the garden, there's nothing. When she says hang out outside... She literally means like just like she's gone outside because she needs to be sick, right? Or to, or piss in the garden, and she can't get up the stairs, right? And George, George is going to sit there and deal with it. And like you would think this woman sounds like at this moment, if you didn't know any better, you would believe that she is actually you know doing well in her alcohol recovery, right? And uh, you know, but believe it or not, folks, she's being very liberal with the truth here. Because I don't want to drink, and every time, every time. His job broke his heart. What, what do you mean? His job broke his heart? What was he doing? Right? His job broke his heart? And he took so much pride in it. And this is I'm going to cry again. I don't even know. Also, by the way, can I just remind you, she doesn't have a job. The woman who can do 300 million things at once... Right, fucking Gordon Gecko here. She can do, like, she can do, like, George, useless, can't deal with it. He's got a job. He's got a job. He's fucking going out working, right, presumably while she's sitting at home on a fucking wrinkled minge watching TV and getting pissed on his fucking money, right? Oh, yeah. So, so what, what, what does he do? Was his job involving what? Can we need you to just, George, can you just sit there and stare at a wall, right? We're doing a study, right? Right, and don't run into it. Don't run into the wall. I know you can't help yourself, and we've put padding on it, right? In fact, in fact, maybe we should put padding on all the walls. In fact, can we put a jacket on George? The one with the long arms, yeah, right. And it made me sad because he had so much pride in his job. And the store that he took care of so much totally went downhill. Mm -hmm. And that broke his heart because he had put so much work and effort into fixing it up. And his manager was awful. Uh-oh. Sarah Boone doesn't like the manager. I don't know about you, folks, but the, you know, I think if we're going to have to be honest here, folks, um, I, think, I, I don't think it's wrong. For, I don't think it's a big stretch or me going out on a limb. Even uh, less than 20 minutes into this video, I think I should say, let's be honest, the term Karen, which has been you know used to describe that sort of uptight bitch who just wants to be a pain in the ass. 
I think we have to accept that Karen, you know, if there, you know, the Uber Karen, if there is one, is Sarah Boone. To the point where I think there is an argument that we should take Karen off the table and just replace it with Boone. Here comes a Boone. Oh God, Mrs. Boone. Oh yes, the great baboon. She's coming. The dark side of the boon. And basically gave up on all of the employees. Wait, wait. He gave up on all the employees. So what you're saying is the place shut down. Right? Because, I mean, did all the other employees... Because that sounds like... And if that's the case, then... You, it sounds like she's blaming... Excuse me, I like to see the manager. What's the problem, miss? My boyfriend is an alcoholic who beats me around the head with a curtain rod and then flushes my head down the toilet every night. Right? And it's your fault. Right? Because you, you, you're not, you know... You're not doing something. It's just not enough. Right. Do you know, in fact, do you know what you're doing wrong? You're 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 giving me an excuse to blame you. Right. So I can just I can view him for what he is, which is basically a useless source of money. So I think that had a huge bearing on why he would drink so much. His ex-wife is bonkers. I mean, I don't want to say I mean, okay, look, write your own joke. OK, Sarah Boone, yeah, his ex-wife is bonkers. Oh, yeah. Well, George, maybe the, maybe the problem here is George is not a very good at, good judge of character. If it is true what they say, you know, cra girls who are crazy in the head are really good in bed, then this bitch must fucking shag like a fucking whip it with a fuck with diarrhea. I, she she must go till there's smoke grinding off your pelvis. But but I don't really want to think about that. You know, Steph, saying that it's the only probably the only time she ever kept her fucking mouth shut. Mm -hmm. She was all over him all the time. Send me money, send me money, send me money. Yeah, she was always bothering him to send him money. Money that he was legally and morally object, you know, obligated to send her, you know, in order to take care of his children and do other bits and pieces that he, you know, had a responsibility towards. And I find that annoying because, quite frankly, that's what I wanted. She was taking the money that he, you know, rightfully, uh, you know, had to give her, whereas when he could have been giving it to me, right, me, right? And do you know why he should have given it to me? Because I know how to spend it better. How can I send you money when I don't have a job? And he's still trying to take care of me and Lucas by paying a bill here or a, there. A bill here and there. Whereas, how else are they being paid, Sarah? Oh, yes, you're probably getting alimony and child support from your ex-husband. Right? So now you've got... So you, don't give us this shit about getting a job and he pays the a bill now and then. Again, you, your lives are identical. You and George are just the same. I reckon it could have easily been you in that suitcase that night. And Christ knows what... I, I can only... There's an alternative reality somewhere... Where there's, where there's another Dick Coughlin currently filming this video, shouting at fucking, sh shouting at fucking George, uh, George, and the stupid dumb shit he's fucking coming up with. Unfortunately, it would probably be in Mexican, because that's what I would do to get out of it. And, and if anybody had any idea of how annoying you were, right, then maybe they would have given him the Congressional Medal of Honor. Getting some groceries. So he always had something on his mind. I'm sorry, paying bill, paying the odd bill once in a while and getting groceries is not, I've got a lot of shit going on, man. I've got to go, I've got to eat food. Do you not understand? Right? I need to maintain, I need to, once a month I have to get, like, you know, a, a, this bit of paper that says I owe the money and then I need to pay that, otherwise we don't have electricity or heating or water, stuff like that. And I've been look, doing some research and apparently food and water are integral to the human existence. I know, no, I'm not looking up breatharianism, Dave. Fuck off, right? Which is why, again, I got the puzzles and the bank. <laughs> That was the most pathetic fucking thing I've ever heard in my life. He's got all this shit going on, so I got I got a jigsaw puzzle and some a set of paintbrushes, so we can and then I'd fake crying again. That's your solution, your solution to his stressful life, his stressful life that is of his own doing. You know the stressful life that he has to do, which involves things like taking care of his children, making sure there's enough food in the fridge, dealing with your fucking annoying, you know, screaming at the toaster, you know, on a Sunday morning with a dead cat on your head, bonkers face. No, you know, dealing with all that. Here's the solution, George. Here, it's a one thousand piece jigsaw puzzle and a set of crayons. If you know, if you want some help, here's a sock puppet. You th I mean, she treats him like he's mentally handicapped. She, you know, that's what she's. That's probably how she views everybody, I imagine. Can I just say, you know, I don't know about you, but puzzles and paint as well. Um, didn't you just say that George was the kind of guy who can't keep his mind focused on something? He's, uh, you know, he's always all over the place. He stresses out when he's, you know, whereas you can handle forty-seven thousand different things at once. You could run CERN on your own. He can't handle that. You bought him a jigsaw puzzle. 
That's not buying a thousand piece jigsaw puzzle is not one distraction. It's a thousand problems. On painting, of course, as we know, painters, painters, well renowned for their sobriety and fucking clear heads. To try and get him off of it so we don't have a drink. Or he doesn't have a drink. Oh, did you see that? Did you spot it? She fucked up there. Play that back again. To try and get him off of it so we don't have a drink. Or he doesn't have a drink. So we don't have a drink. I mean, he doesn't have a drink. I mean, he, he, we, who, uh, <coughs> Oh, hi. Hello, I'm Sarah. So when you all see my phone, you can see all of the damage he has done to me and the videos of him smashing my television because he's belligerently drunk. So why can't you show us all that now? Oh, I get it, because you've been cataloguing everything, haven't you? Because that's the thing you would do in a healthy relationship, wouldn't it? You would keep a record of everything and you'd also film everything. It seems to me kind of weird that every couple of weeks you need to redecorate and go to the hospital, and you're sat there going, it's all good, it's all good, it's fine. I'm fine. Well, most of the time, I just don't want to be there. So, so most of the time, most of the time you don't want to be there. You go on a bike, jigsaw puzzles, painting, fucking hide and seek. What century are you living in? Well, this bike that you ride, that you keep falling off, is it because it's a penny farthing? Have you got a hoop and a stick? You know, what's ever next? You know, I don't, I, don't dread to, I dread to think, quite frankly, because, you know, I always like to look on the positive side when the best I can. You know, just imagine, I mean, this is what, she just, she, her boyfriend is dead over a game of hide and seek. That's how, imagine if this bitch had discovered Monopoly. You've got hotels on Park Lane and Mayfair, she fucking lands on it, right? She's got one dollar left, right? She'll be making a furniture out of your skin by the end of the week. And I try to help him, I try to calm him down. Eventually, he just passes out. I tried to help him, I tried to calm him down, eventually he passes out. That's called going to sleep, Sarah. You'd know about that, wouldn't you? What do you mean you're trying to help him? What, you're helping him what? Pass out, drunk, or go to sleep? He's doing that on his own. This is self-functioning. It works, you know, he doesn't need any outside interference. God, this woman! Well, yesterday it made it sound like you guys were just drinking, like, a glass or two. Like, yeah, you obviously had the bottle, but you, I mean, you told me on the, yeah, but you told me on recording, like, that you were not drunk, he was not drunk, you guys were having I, a good time. I don't get, I can't get drunk. I, number one, I do not want to get drunk. <laughs> what kind of fucking, that was the quickest rationalization I've ever seen. I don't get drunk. I can't get drunk. I don't want to. Which is it, Sarah? You either don't, if you don't, then you don't need to want to or can't. If you can't, then it doesn't matter whether you don't or you want to. And if you just want to, don't want to not, then that's the... Do you stop? Why is it that people who do nothing but lie out of their fuck every hole they've got? This woman would rather climb to Mount Everest at the top and tell a lie than stay at the bottom and tell the truth. But they're always so bad at it. Why? I've never... It's just so... You, you, she should be the world... She should be the fucking undisputed fucking heavyweight champion for life. Oh, and also, please just remember that. She just said she, she doesn't get drunk. She was not drunk. Right, we only had a couple of glasses. What, of course, the term glass, very subjective. Where was it? Oh, it's this fucking aquarium you've got over here. I don't like being non-compassmentous. Oh, non-compassmentous. <gasps> non-compassmentous. Pretentious. Moi! Having my wits about myself. I don't like feeling out of control. <laughs> Sarah, if you don't like having your wits about you, you must feel fucking lost all the time. Jesus Christ. Wait, this is you with wits, is it? These are the wits, are they? Where are they? How many of them? Right. Mm -hmm. So, I'm just saying, you're you're making it sound like, like he's a raging alcoholic today, and yesterday I was kind of asking you those questions, and you're like, a little defensive, like, no, we're not alcoholics, he, I'm not. we are not, you know. <laughs> Did you hear that? I'm not. I'm not. It's, you are not the one who is dead, and A, B, yes, you are an alcoholic, Sarah. You drunk, you, you're constantly talking about, you're blacking out, you've had to go to fucking, you've had to go to AA meetings. What do you think the AA stands for? No, but, you guys were both sober. 
on Sunday. Oh, just we both be sober, I just want to paint something over, get you into the suitcase and fuck you. <sighs> And then chuck it down the stairs. But Jesus, we were both sober. God help. Just, you should have thought this through a bit, Sarah. You know, I'm not expecting. Any, I mean, this is. I mean, to be fair, I mean, Prince Andrew can't do it. She's got to have much chance, is she? Your knowledge, because when I said you went and passed out, you were like, no, I didn't pass out. I just fell asleep. So now it's kind of like. What is it? Is it, were you guys drinking and it got out of hand and no. it got physical? No. Or... All right, I'm just fucking asking, Sarah. Two people known for having domestic violence and for having lots of fights, both pissed out of their brains. One of them's woken up dead, covered in bruises. I'm just asking. You know, I suppose. You know, what am I supposed to do? No. How dare you? You bastard. Is it Sunday was one of the better <coughs> days that we have had in quite some time. Sunday, the day that George was killed, was one of the better days. It begs the question, doesn't it? He's dancing with my dog. You can see that too on the pictures. Him loving the dog. Mm-hmm. There's a Kira the Wolf situation loving the dog. He's dancing with the dog. <laughs> he won't even dance with you when you're the only human being in the room. No, fuck this. Where's the, where's the dog? Anything. I'll do it. Oh, Jesus Christ. He loves the he dog. Loves, he loves the dog. He dances with the dog. He and the dog get on very well together. I'm not bitter. And dancing around, having a good time, and just... Just being happy. Kind of thing. Yes, Sarah, these are not revelations. We know that. Sarah, everybody is aware uh, that Sunday there was what was happening. But it's but nothing. Just the, he still d this fucking woman. He doesn't know. I can't. I mean, I can get like maybe two, three glasses of wine, and I'll be fine. But I have to have my wits about myself because I don't know what to expect. Holy shit! That is a what kind of. How can you live like that? I've got to keep my... So, so is, this the, is this your logic? That living with some violent, unpredictable, fucking alcoholic hooligan who might just occasionally try and get the foot on and fucking shove it, down, shove it down your face or burn the place down whilst he's smashing the TV up and tying your legs in a fucking double granny knot, that keeps your wits about you because you don't want to get drunk in case he fucking just comes in and decides to self-immolate you. Imagine living in that fucking... Well, you don't have to now, do you? I have to have my wits about me because I don't know what's going to happen. And yet here we are. What? Trying to figure that out. Well, let's talk about Sunday. What was Sunday? How were you... Like, how many glasses of wine did you have? How many glasses of wine did he have? The bottle was gone. I mean, I don't know if you poured any out. Yes. No, that was from previous. <laughs> you said that there was a half bottle left yeah, over. Yeah, much. Mm-hmm. And then, um, that you had went, that, well, I don't even know how the wine, how'd you guys get the wine for Sunday? You'll notice that this is a very simple question, and and the the, the like, female police officer is having to ramble here, because she's, Sarah's just staring at her, like she's just, like, like she's just farted during her mother's funeral, and it's like, Sarah, it's, an, it's a simple question, oh no, that was from a previous, previous what, previous hour in the day. Yeah, well, oh, fucking, oh. Uh, Sarah, just, how, many, how much wine have you had? And she's got to be careful here, because she's, she's made it very clear. Not drunk. N compass mentis. Right? Wits. Right? Witty. Witty and compass. Witty compost. I'm guessing he went to Publix. He's, does he well, do the, does he, like, leave the house and you stay home, or do you go to Publix? Like, because I know you talk about them. Wow, this sounds like a fucking riveting and exciting life you lead. Sometimes he'll go out to the offie, and sometimes I'll go with him. Depends if we want to get enough to carry. Okay. Did that you go with him Sunday to no. Publix? So most of the time what happens is... So most of the time what happens is, answer the question, Sarah. Did you go with him? She's not, you're not going to answer, are you?
Mm. Because the convenience store where we get cigarettes is here, and then Publix literally is catting walk us to it. Okay. So what he'll do is he'll start, go by Publix, and then on the way back, catch the convenience store. Mm. Could you, Sarah, this is not fucking... Yes, we get it, Sarah. There's a shop next to the thing, so you buy them and buy them. That's not what she asked. Right. And you go in there, and then we go there, we walk around the corner, and we go into the... So we've got the cigarettes and alcohol. Then what we'll do is we'll turn around 180 degrees, and we'll walk down the sidewalk, which is called that because you walk on the side, and it's made out of tar... It's made out of concrete and asphalt. And we go down there, take the at left, and sometimes we'll... And then we'll just head back to our home, which is the name... It's the place where we live, right? It's our apartment, and we'll, with the stuff that we've got. And... and oh, 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 do, do, do. Oh, sometimes I get a feeling. So is that what he did Sunday? I, I'm guessing that's what he did. I'm guessing that's what he did. What, what did you think happened, Sarah? You you just randomly th you just, you just randomly found loads of cigarettes. This is. I guess that's what happened. No, oh, I've got I've got my wits about me. I wonder how, where my alcoholic boyfriend gets all this fucking booze from that he brings home every fucking night from the place that I've literally just described in graphic detail. Using you know, sh I even showed him a map and oriented the fuck up. Because the next thing I know, he's walking in with a bottle. Okay. So that's... Okay. It's him trying to be nice, so I don't have to go out and do it. Okay, okay, I'm trying to be nice, okay? I'm trying to be... I'm just doing my best. And I fucking well am. Plus, there was stuff that I around the house that I had to take care of. Oh, the old bullshit. There was stuff around the house. No, there isn't. There's never stuff around the house. And if there is stuff, what stuff? It's the house. Right? All your stuff's in the house. Right? It's one of those bullshit excuses, I'll have to see what I've done. Oh, there's stuff around the house, oh, I don't know about it. But that's usually what will happen. Or I'm folding laundry and he'll go run out and do whatever. Okay. So, where were you guys at on, on, hmm. on drunkenness, not drunkenness on Sunday? <coughs> you I told us you weren't drunk. No, I was not drunk. Right. I was not drunk. I, I, I was not drunk. I swear. I, I, I swear. I was not, not drunk. Not drink. How, are, you, are you accusing me of drinking an inch? How dare you? I am completely not pissed. I got it. I could drive this. I could get in my car now and drive home and barely fucking kill anybody. Right? And I, and that's very impressive, you know, because I don't have a fucking car, but I'll make one because I'm that compass mentos. <sighs> oh, sir, I got my trousers. So with him, I don't know. I I know when it's like, oh, okay, man, where I have told him, slow down. It's starting to catch up with you. Slow down. Slow down. Here we go again. Sarah, we can guess it. You able to tell when someone's drunk or not? And th that's, this is not fucking information. This is not impressive. This is like, you know, what are you doing? This is like going for a job at NASA and saying, hey, you know, listen, just see this, see this, you saw it, see that. Whoa, got your ass there, see? Mmm, see, that's me, you know. Right, hey, got your nose, yeah. I've never seen someone so fucking, just so effortlessly fucking, she's trying to flex on the fact that she and her boyfriend go to the offie and get, get drunk and that she can tell, right, she can tell, because she can literally drink, fu she could drink fucking, you know, she could drink Zyklon B and keep her fucking head clean all night. And another thing too is I don't like listening to music with him because he gets too involved in the music and the music that he listens to. Does he? What a selfish bu- How dare he sit there and listen to music and get involved in it? I mean, it's only the, exactly what music is for. It's there, it's a, it's a creative art form that is able to connect with us on a level that's somewhat intangible in which we can relate and we can feel like we're not alone. But Sarah doesn't want to deal with that shit because if the music's on, it means she's got to compete with something else that's making noise and that George isn't listening to. You know, I've actually just realised, I reckon that the song You're So Vain by Carly Simon was actually written by Sarah Boone. ...is a little rough around the edges and like just, it makes me fractious listening to his music, so... I'm sorry, I've had to start again. I just keep laughing at it. He gets too involved in the music. He starts like moving and stuff and fucking giving it all this fucking shit, you know. I'm just like, oh, God, who wants to listen to that? 
Oh God, literally, in your, if I was next to, I've got, if I had to live with you, I would pray that Hannah Tarash fucking turned up and fucking destroyed the place. Right? And if you don't get that reference, if you don't know who the hell are Hannah Tarash, well then you're not cool enough to fucking know. And I am cool enough to know. I literally saw a YouTube video about them two days ago. Right? So yes, I'm mocking you for something I learned yesterday. I kept asking them, let's not, just, let's, just you and me talk. You and me will just be the ones that are talking, which was fine, because I mean he... <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you what, Sarah, why don't, we, why don't we for a change of pace tonight, why don't we talk? Well, Sarah, that's all we fucking do, bitch! All we do is sit around and talk about puzzles and fucking this and fucking that and Jesus and you've got me crocheting bubble hats and stuff. I mean, what do you, what, you've bought a loom. I mean, what do you mean talk about what? All we do is sit in and drink. We've got fuck all to talk about. The only We have the same conversation every night. It's just we're so drunk we can't fucking remember it. I'd rather sit here and listen to what, whoever the fuck, a rough around the edges, racist. <laughs> Who do you like, sir? I bet she likes like Fiona Apple and shit like that, you know? We were playing with the dog, whatever, and then it's like, okay, now let's do the painting. We just did the puzzle, took a break, now let's do this. Oh, oh God, you, this woman can schedule for... Jesus Christ, she should have been entertainment officer on the fucking Belgrano. Can you imagine? Right, we've done this now, now it's time for arts and crafts, right? Well, hey, George, George, why don't we sit here, why don't we sit here when we do that thing where we pay each other compliments for self-esteem issues? Tell, you, tell me something you like about me, and then I will tell you something that you should like about me. And whilst we sit here, paint, my God almighty! It's like the worst, he's, he's living in a fucking, he's living drunk constantly and living in what is effectively a rehab clinic with fucking Nurse Ratchet on crack. I, I'm in no way, no way a control freak whatsoever. I was not timing him with the puzzle to make sure I'd see if he could beat the time he got last week. Because if he didn't, we'd fucking have some of that. It wasn't, it wasn't like that at all. No, it's always, no, listen, schedule, scheduling is fun. I like a spreadsheet. Who doesn't? Sure not. Sat down. We're sitting in there talking, laughing, talking about new movies. We're watching movie trailers. Oh, God. For, the, for net, the Netflix and chill, if you're a man who suffers from premature ejaculation, we just watch the trailers, you know. I tend to be done soon enough. We can just, you know, catch the end of it. Oh, look, Fast and Furious. That's a bit ironic, isn't it? Oh, my. We're watching the trailers. Right? Do you know why? That, do you know why? Because they can't afford a streaming service to fucking watch the whole thing while we're doing painting and all that other stuff. So it's still background noise to him, because I think that's what he's used to, is having background yeah, noise. Yes, Sarah, your voice is literally the definition of white noise. He's got 19 things going on at once. He's learning how to paint. He's dancing with a fucking dog. He's fucking watching movie trailers. And on the back of there, he's got to take notes fucking... I think, I think, I think you just, what you've just done is actually proved that he's the one who was doing 55 fucking things at once, because he got up every morning, and you were there, like a fucking Butlin's red coat from Auschwitz, fucking telling him what he's going to do. All right, now we're having a skateboarding competition, then we're going to do break dancing, then we're going to go abseiling. Oh, Jesus Christ, woman, would you... A, a background noise, just fuck off! My God! And what has this got to do? Can anyone remember the question she was asked? I don't. It was sim I think she was asked, Sarah, what is your name? Right, and, for and that's it. Now we're down here. Four hours later, she's telling us about God knows what. Her fucking problem with this dog that she was... She seems really bitter about the dog. Why don't you dance with him? Oh, or is the dog a youth... Is it coat? Is it a nickname? I'm with you now. I like it. Where me, I can sit in here all day with not a peep. I c I'm sitting here with not a peep. I mean... I wouldn't. I never have. I literally will have... If I'm in here on my own, I will have an argument with the ceiling and claim that it's the floor. I, I know I can do that. I would fucking, you know, I just never, I just never ever stop, you know, because, you know, if I do stop talking, then it will mean that for maybe a split second, I'll have to actually consider my life. So I have to just get the bullshit rolling because now I'm at a point where I'm living... The bullshit that I'm saying is actually, I believe it now, right? I'm at that level. I'm that good. I've, I've been my, I'm my own cult leader, right? And, uh, yeah, so... Anyway, what was the question? Uh, sir, this is a fish and chip shop. Could you please get out? But he always has to have some kind of background noise, which I didn't mind because the trailers were cool. So, so he has to have background noise, but you don't mind because they're cool. And why are you talking about this then? And that's not a background... Sarah, a trailer for a film that you've put on is not background noise. It's literally something you'd want to watch. You can't have... Why would you put a trailer on for a film as background noise? They're fucking one and a half minutes long. 
You don't do that. You put like a fucking eight hour ASMR video or one of those, you know, ten hours of sounds of old people snoring and farting in bed. You know, that's what you do. You don't sit there. Oh my God, this woman. He likes background noise. I just like dead silence. Because it, because if there's any noise, then that means I might miss something. I want to know if, if a pebble is moved two miles away by a dormouse. Right? I want fucking in on it. And he was interested in showing them to me, getting excited about movies that were out or upcoming. Okay. So on your laptop, you're talking about. Mm -hmm. like, okay. And I mean. <laughs> So that police woman say, oh, right, right, yeah, yeah. That is the, I know that sound. If you're a man and you've, had, you've been in a couple of relationships, you know that sound. That sound is the very, that is the distinct noise of a woman pretending that, to be interested in whatever the fuck something you're saying. And like, even though she has literally forgotten everything because she has no idea what you're talking about. And you are boring her fucking shitless, right? You are just boring her to fucking death. She just needs it. But in this case, she needs to get to the point. Sarah, could you please? And then it, we, it was... But you a, said it was a good day. Like, you guys didn't have any, have any uh, conversations about your relationship. You guys didn't go down, like, the rabbit hole. Like, had too many to drink. And you guys start I, getting... Nope. When I tell you this... It made me so happy that he actually listened to what I, I had to say. <laughs> oh my god, that's so pathetic. It made me happy that he... What do you mean he was acting? It's taken... You've been together for a year, Sarah. He's only just started now, is he? Has he given up? He's got fucking... What? Would you... This is, makes no sense. What do you mean? It's taken you three years to get his attention. Eva Braun tried to kill herself twice when Hitler was ignoring her. My god. He's finally listening to what I've got to say. Is he really, Sarah? Or is he just sitting there trying desperately not to fucking strangle you to death, bitch? My God. With just, we'll get through it. This will be fine. It's just, it's, it's a small hurdle that you and I together will get through. What, what is? What, what's a small hurdle? What, him listening to you? That's a hurdle, is it? Yeah, he's got, yeah, God for, yeah, we'll get through this, George, don't worry, we're going to be through, we're going to work together, you and I, we, we, we can, I will promise you that in, down the long road, us, mate, right, three hours later, he's in a fucking Samsonite in the corner. Because, I'm talking about the money, jobs, stars. Yeah, money, jobs, food, place to live, bills, you know, meaning and fucking existence in life, oh, chronic alcoholism, overcoming the fact that I've got the most awful personality on fucking that's ever been invented in the history of ever. God actually fucking it w really raised his game. Jesus Christ. All I've got to do, just those tiny little things, just got to sort out literally my entire life. Right, which involves undoing the previous 42 years, right? Journey of a thousand miles. Yes. Nothing no. relationship-wise, though. Like, no issues. Relation like, did you guys have a conversation about your relationship, or was it just about, just like, what's going on right well, now? Well, they, they were going to have a conversation about the relationship, but, but, but there was a trailer for fucking Star Wars. One, one of the other four fucking Star Wars. I don't know which one. She doesn't know either. But I bet she could tell you everything about fucking Star Wars. It wasn't even Star Wars, it was Star Trek. That's how fucking... But you didn't know that, but I didn't either. I just made it up. But I know that's what happened. She probably watched the Star Trek fucking trailer and probably went, well, it looks fucking rubbish. I mean, look, I mean, Darth Vader ain't even in. I try to evoke it from him so he gets it off his chest because I call him the volcano where eventually he's going to erupt. Oh yeah, George, my man, <laughs> that volcano taking the bitch to Space Mountain, are we? What do you mean? I need him to get it off his chest. It sounds like this guy has done nothing but fucking, he's, the, he's Mount Pilatumu, right? Just erupting all over the fucking place. You are Pompeii, right? And he is the fucking, fucking whatever the fucking thing is, Pompeii volcano. I don't know. But, dude, I try to get it out of him. Why don't you just talk to him, fucking Sarah? Why, about, why don't you just be a fucking human being for once? And stop with all the fu Stop making fucking... And ordering him around to do painting. And fucking sit there and have a debate society. And then God knows what else. Right? I mean, why don't you just be normal once in your life? Right. And what he has learned in his classes is to communicate. 
mm-hmm. which is a huge thing in a relationship. Communicate. And let me ask you, Sarah, do you know all about communication? Because you're doing all that. You've taught him. You know how. You've been through this. So what do you think? What does that? So do you think you did a good job of that, considering that... For all this time, you've been bottling up clearly enough that when you erupted, right, he ended up two foot by two foot by two, right? You could have FedExed the motherfucker across the across the ocean, right? Do you think you did a good job considering you murdered the poor bastard? And not only that, you tortured him in the meantime, you know, in that suitcase where he was stuck there that you remembered in the morning in the fucking weirdest fucking sequel to Home Alone ever. Right. Where he has been practicing communication. Fuck off. I mean it. Or I... Fuck off. Cleft in twain is what is how the papers will describe it. So he actually talks to me about things and unburdens himself. Put it on me. I'll sit there and try and figure it out for you like I have almost everything. Oh, God, I've worked it all out. And in fact, you have, Sarah. You've solved all George's problems because now, what with him not being alive, he doesn't have anything to worry about anymore. And in doing so, you have unburdened yourself of all his problems. It's fucking genius. If this was done on a sort of national scale between two conflicting nations, you'd be a, it'd be genocide. Nobody knew George better than I did. I say that I knew George better than himself. Lovely. I say that I knew George better than... Of course you did, Sarah, because I imagine that you think you know everything better than anyone else does. Including... What what a... Imagine... I mean, you didn't even say other people would say that I knew George, or George would say that I knew him better than he knew himself. No, you know him. Imagine the, I mean, imagine the, 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 could you, could you possibly, how could you possibly have a relationship with someone who, you know, who believed that they knew you, that they, that they believed they had access to every part of, like, there wasn't, there weren't parts of your, 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 your psyche or your mind that were walled off to fucking, you know, as they, as, I'm sure if we're being honest, we all have those areas, those parts of our brain that we keep very much to ourselves and why would, why would you want to have a relationship with someone who was completely legible and i tried in every way shape and form ask everyone uh, ask everyone okay well if you're watching this video you would fall under the, presumably in the venn diagram of everyone that would include if you're watching this video it would also include me and i don't know so but ask everyone you know ask everyone okay if you're watching this and you know, you, you know, you know, you can answer that question, please do. We'll do a poll. I helped him. I took care of him. I miss him a lot and I didn't even sleep last night. I, I miss him a lot and I didn't even sleep last night. Oh, poor you. You didn't have a good night's sleep. Well, George is sleeping like a fucking baby right now. Jesus Christ, you want sympathy because you didn't have a night, you shouldn't have had a night's sleep. Right? Bearing in mind, this, 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 this you know, her, her boyfriend died like 24 hours ago. Does this sound, does, does she sound like someone who's that bothered about it? I miss him a lot. I mean, is there any chance it got to be too much for you and you couldn't handle taking care of him and... I never stopped. Trying to... I never stopped. That's what I'm here for. I never stopped. I'm here now because I'm still trying to help him. I'm still trying to help him. A reminder, he is dead. Keep, don't ever stop fucking, remember that every time she talks. He's dead. Yeah, we just don't, I mean, it's unexplainable how he got these injuries and... I have no idea. You were the only one with him. A hundred percent right hand to God. I have no idea how he got them. This just in from God. Uh, keep me out of this, Sarah. Right? Please. Fuck you. I don't, I don't need this shit. Nobody touched anybody. Nobody touched anybody. Okay. Um, you had mentioned that you take... Uh, you would take... Photos, videos, just kind of like a proof and just in general. Yeah, I started documenting at one point, but that was that was way before 
I think the last time that he got arrested, where he was flying off the deep end. <clears throat> okay. But then I had him bailed out. I got him out of jail. Right. But because he had violated the pretrial diversion, they this time it's probation, so you don't have a choice in it. You have to go to see your probation officer. You have to go to these classes. It's court ordered. Mm -hmm. Where it took him a while to get used to it and understand, they're not messing around. I even went down and met his uh, probation officer, which I say I she, she's wonderful. That's one of my questions too I need to talk to you about. Mm -hmm. Hugged me and said how much she knows that I take care of him. She called me personally. She, she called you personally, as opposed to what? How, how, how what, is she going to call your agent? Call, call she called you personally. She, right. she probably knew all these things about how much you took care of him because you told her. One time, when George was at work, when he was working, 42 minute phone call. She and I just saying how grateful she is that George has me. That is that is an oddly specific memory. A 42 minute phone call and all she did was talk about how brilliant you were. Really? And she knows how hard I'm working to help him, just as she is and just as the classes will. So once he started actually going on a regular basis to the probation officer and then to his substance abuse class and his I don't know what BIP stands for, Matters Intervention Program. Mm -hmm. And actually listening to what it is everyone had to say, he changed. So in other words, he was getting better when he started seeing, when he started doing everything else other than just hanging around with you, which is what he was doing before. When he was just hanging around with you, he would get drunk and violent. But when he started going to all of the, you know, the substance abuse classes and all the other stuff, then he got better, right? Right. What's the common? Di let, let's do science on this one. What's the f what's the one dif differentiating differential factor? What's the f what's the one factor that's consistent there? 